Yes, AutoCAD Blocks. Today is your chance to learn all about AutoCAD Blocks and how they can help you save so much time. Are you ready? So, what are AutoCAD Blocks, right? Well, AutoCAD Blocks are simply uh, named groups of objects that act uh, as a single 2D or 3D object. You can use blocks to create repeated content such as symbols, common components, and standard details, right? But the important part of blocks is that they can help you save some time in AutoCAD, as well as maintain some consistency uh, between your drawings. And of course, the blocks can help you reduce the file size in AutoCAD. So let me show you. So right now, over here, uh, you can see that I have this person. And this right now is simply a combination of lines and polylines, as you can see here on the property palette. So that's a polyline and some lines. So this is one single object. If I will have to reuse this person, let's say five times on a drawing, I will simply, you know, copy this and start placing it on my, on my drawing that I need. However, this would be a bad practice because uh, this would be a good idea to have it as a block. So right here, I have the same person, but you can see that this is now a block reference and we can go on the property and again this is a block so the beauty of a block again uh, is that now i can simply copy this person right if i need it on a drawing and whenever i want to change or modify something on this person for instance let's say that i later on find out that I don't want to show the interior lines of this person. I only needed the outline, right? So what happened now if I do that? So let me edit this block. To edit a block, you simply double click on it like so, and then click OK. So now we are on a block editor. So here is where we can modify our block. Like I was saying, I'm gonna select everything and deselect the outline holding shift on my keyboard. So once I do that, uh, I can simply hit the delete key on my keyboard like so. So I'm gonna close the block editor now because I don't want to modify anything else. And then I'm gonna say, save the changes to my block. So once I do that, you can see that all of the other blocks also updated. So I don't have to waste time doing the same changes over and over again. However, you can see that the ones, the person that wasn't a block didn't change. So I will have to do this manually, which is a waste of time. So that's a good example why blocks are very important if you think about saving time in AutoCAD. All right, so let's now, um, let me show you how you can create a block, very simple and straightforward. So I have this person, of course, again, this is full of lines, it's not a block. To create a block, we simply select our objects and then use the keyboard shortcut B for the block command. And then of course, press enter. At this time, what we do is we have this block definition dialog box. So over here, we simply going to type our name for the block, right? Let's say person one or, you know, this is all up to you. So the important part here is that the base point for your block, uh, you can have it checked so you can specify the base point on over here on your screen so that's important and let's click ok so now following instructions on the command line it asks for specify the insertion point or base point 
So I'm going to click over here at the bottom of this person like so click and now it's asking me to select my objects. So I want to select all of these and press enter and boom, this is now a block. As you can see the base point, this is the base point where we can simply move our block like so. All right. So now that we went over some of the importance of why we can use blocks and let's go over some more advanced techniques and basically all you need to know about blocks, right? So let's start with the first one which is attribute blocks. Yes. So the idea of attribute blocks is, um, so as you can see over here, we created this simple block, but let's go now with a more advanced block. So right now I have this block over here that it's simply a, this is a tag for a window for a floor plan in architecture that has a number, the number one. But if we select this, we can go to the properties and we can see that this is a block reference. However, there is a limitation here for this block because what happened if I want to change this number to a different one, like two or three or four. So I can, so if I click on it, you can see that I will have to edit my block in order to change the number. Wouldn't it be easier to simply click or double click on my number and simply type a new number? Well, this is where attributes come into place. Let me show you. So let's move over here to the site and I have the same uh, window tag over here. So now I'm going to add a attribute so you can see that if i select this this is not a block this is simply a polyline you can see over here so let's add a attribute definition to do that the shortcut would be att and let's press enter so at this point we have the dialog box that it says attribute definition uh, over here, I'm going to simply type a default character like X and X and so on, because this is not about attributes. If you really want to lo learn all of the concepts about attributes, I have already a video on my channel that you can check out later. But let's keep moving. And over here, what I like about the justification is I'm going to uh, select middle and center. And for my text size, nine inches that's fine i'm gonna click ok so now um autocad is saying to specify the star point so my star point i want it to be in the center of the stack so i'm gonna use that snap option click like so so now this is not a regular text this is a smart text called attribute so if we go here it says attribute definition However, this is still not a block. So let's make it a block, right? We already know how to do that. So let's select everything and type B, press enter. And again, let's rename this window tag. So specify on the screen, let's check. The option to select my objects, I don't want to select my objects here on the screen because I already did that. So I'm gonna uncheck that and then click OK. So again, it says specify insertion base point. I like to put it on the center. So I'm gonna click over here, click like so. And then I will accept that by clicking OK. All right, so now this is now a block. If you can see over here is a block reference. However, this is a more, uh, smarter block because we implemented a attribute definition. So let me show you now. So if I copy this, uh, you know, using the regular copy command, I'm gonna copy a couple of times like so. And do you remember this block where I couldn't change the number? So let's try now. Let's say I want these two blocks, sorry, this block to be a different number. So I'm gonna double click 
and this new dialog box pops out, the attribute editor. So I can simply type over here the number two and click OK. And boom, do you see that? So that's the advantage of using attributes inside a block. All right, so that's one key concept that you should know in a tutorial about blocks. So the beauty of this is that now I can even select multiple blocks and change the attribute at the same time. So I can go to my properties and where it says attribute, I can say number three and press enter. And boom, you can see that I could modify multiple blocks information at the same time. Isn't that awesome? All right, so let's keep moving. So we already learned about the attributes uh, on blocks and let's keep moving with the next concept. The next concept is about blocks and fields. Yes. So for that, let me go over here on this drawing and over here. Let me open a new drawing so I can show you this better. And the drawing that I'm going to open is this one. I believe. All right. So I have this block over here. Uh, if we go to the property palette, it's a block reference and it has some attributes on it. We already know about attributes, so you should be confident about this. But I have one attribute over here. So if I double click, that's the attribute again. And there are another one here and here and so on. But here we're going to introduce you fields. Fields is an important concept in blocks because it is a smart piece of text that can automatically be updated uh, depending on some settings here that we set up. For instance, right now you can see that this EX1 doesn't match this uh, text with my layout, but I would like to um, name my layout. For instance, if I have my layout as A1, I would like to always update this EX1 because in reality on an office, you always want to match your layout tab name with this information over here at the bottom. So let me show you how we can do that with fields. All right. So for instance, I'm going to edit this block um i can double i cannot double click to edit my block because if i do that you will see that the block added the attribute editor shows up but i don't want that so to edit this block i'm gonna right click and pick block editor so once i do that this is the information that i want to add a smart text or also called field so what I'm going to do is erase this right now. You can see that it is an attribute definition and we already talked about that. So you should already know that I'm going to delete that and I'm going to add something that is called field. So again, that's the shortcut. Simply type field and press enter here. We're going to have all of these different options, but don't scare, uh, don't get scared about this. The option that we're going to need is a system variable. And once we do that over here under the system variable options, we need the C tab. That is the uh, layout tab over here. So and then I'm going to pick uppercase as that and simply click OK. So once I do that, um, I'm going to change the height over here going to click that and right now it's four inches. I want my text to be eight inches. So now the justification, I also want to change that. So I'm going to click and then I want the middle center. So MC click. And finally, I'm going to place my field all the way up here like so. All right. So finally, I like to be this in a different color just for illustration purposes. So I'm going to change it to magenta like so. So I'm done uh, with the modification of my block. I'm going to close my block editor over here at the top and click save the changes. 
So look what happened now. We have uh, two texts, one above the other. It is because when we use attributes inside blocks, we need to know how to update the block. So the information somehow refresh. So in order to do that, we need to call for the uh, ATT sync. So the ATT sync is going to help us to refresh again this uh, block that has attributes on it. So let's select that. And now following the instructions, it says enter an option I want to select. So click on that. And now it says select a block. So I'm going to select this block. So like so. And then um, I'm going to say yes. And boom. You see that now my block shows up correctly, right? So at this point, you can see that now my layout tab match exactly with this information. And the beauty of fields is again that if I change this layout now to something like A2. So, and let's say I forget about it, right? I forgot to update this information. Then I go here and keep working on my drawing and so on. And then come back and boom, you can see that it automatically updates to match the layout tab name. Isn't that great? So that's the beauty of using fields inside a block. So you can already see how uh, you can improve your productivity by using all of these key concepts with your blocks. And there are even more. So let's keep moving with this AutoCAD block tutorial. So the next thing that I want to talk about is wipeouts and blocks. So wipeouts, it's a very important concept to even make your blocks more powerful in AutoCAD. So let me show you for that. I'm going to go on a different drawing over here. And right now I have this tenant sign um, over here that it is a block. We can see it. If we go to the property palette, it says block reference. And we already know because it also has one grip over here that we can simply move uh, as we wish. But let's talk about wipeouts. So the idea of wipeouts is that if I, you can see that I have a problem right now where my tenant sign gets lost in the background of this hatch or brick, right? So in order to avoid that, I will have to trim my hatch or uh, trace it around, but that would be a waste of time. This is where wipeouts come into place. So let me show you. So in order to add a wipeout, I simply need to edit my block. So I'm going to right click and pick block editor. And now again, we are for the second time, I believe, or third time inside the block editor environment where we are going to add a new wipeout. So in order to add a wipeout, we can simply type wipeout, right? Like so. And that's the wipeout option. So I'm going to select that. And following my instructions on the command line, it says specify first point or polyline. I want to pick the polyline option. So I'm going to click on it. And then it's asking to select a closed polyline. So I'm going to select this like so. And it's asking to erase the polyline. I don't want to erase it, so I'm going to say no. And boom, you can see that now a wipeout is right there and is hiding our text. So we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is select my wipeout. So I'm going to go select and go make sure that on the properties, the wipeout is the one that is being selected. So I'm going to use a command called draw order to send this wipeout to the back. So draw order, press enter and pick the back option. So once I do that, I already send my wipeout to the back. I can simply close my block editor and of course, save the changes. So, and boom, you can see now what happened is that our sign is looking much better because a wipeout is hiding the background information 
So now if we move our block, we can simply move it like so and the wipeout will follow. Isn't that great? So again, that's an important concept that you need to know about blocks, the use of wipeouts. All right, so let's keep moving with the next concept for this AutoCAD block tutorial. So the next idea is about dynamic blocks. So what is a dynamic block, right? We were talking only about blocks, blocks that are static or are simply a um, combination of objects put together in one single 2D or 3D uh, object, right? So the idea of dynamic blocks comes where, and for that, let me go over here on this drawing. So dynamic blocks are a new concept in AutoCAD. So let's convert a block like this with an attribute to a dynamic block. So in order to convert a regular block to a dynamic block, of course, we need to edit the block. So I'm gonna click block editor. And what happened if I have um, a tag that doesn't have this shape? Maybe I need a tag that is only a, a rectangle or a circle or so on. So you will have to create many different blocks, right? You will need one block for a rectangle, another block for a circle and so on. So that's where dynamic blocks comes into place. Let me show you. So dynamic blocks, um, you can, in order to activate or make this into a dynamic block, you're gonna need the authoring palette. So let's click on it like so in, on your ribbon and it's right here authoring palette and basically the idea is that we can add some parameters some actions to a regular block and make it more uh, intelligent smarter right so it can even save us more time so let's do one simple uh, modification to this block to convert it into a dynamic block for instance i'm gonna add the visibility parameter so i'm gonna click on it and then i'm gonna follow my instruction and say specify parameter location so i'm gonna click over here like so and then i'm gonna have the option over here now on your ribbon that it says visibility so right now i have one in order to add more visibilities i'm gonna click here so i'm gonna rename this and say uh, window tag and I'm gonna add one more and I'm gonna call this, uh, let's say door tag, right? For example, this is door tag. So I'm gonna say leave visibility of existing objects unchanged. That's good, click okay. And let's make that current, the window tag by clicking set current and click okay. So nothing happened so far, but what I'm gonna do now is uh, copy this to the side with the regular CO really quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a circle, right? So I'm gonna draw a circle like so really quick. I'm gonna place it right there on the center of my block like so. And I'm gonna delete, of course, this, All right? So now I'm gonna, I have two things over here now. So, for my window tag, I want this shape, right? So I'm gonna select this and hide it with this over here, the make invisible. So I'm gonna click that and boom, this is gone. So now when I change my visibility to door tag, I want my circle to show up and not this shape. So for that, I am gonna first select all of this and then I'm gonna put a guideline over here from the center of this so I don't get confused. Like so, that's the center. So I'm gonna select this shape and the text. And on the door tag, I want to be hidden. So I'm gonna click this that it says make invisible, click. And I want my circle to show up for my door tag. So I'm gonna click this over here where it says visibility mode. So I'm gonna click. And then I'm gonna select my circle 
and then say uh, make visible this time so i'm gonna click like so and then i'm gonna finally turn the visibility mode off so i can see my circle so at this point i can simply move all of these to the location and i can erase this line all right so we have two visibility states so i can simply close this block editor and save the changes and this is a dynamic block now so look a dynamic block instead of having only a base point it also has other uh, call grips so in this case i have this one over here so if i click on it i can simply pick another option let's say door tag and boom my circle is going to show up now here and this is a very simple example about dynamic blocks so let's keep moving now uh, with the next concept about block that uh, is going to be where can i download autocad blocks right because sometimes we need blocks that aren't available here on the autocad program so very easy let me show you how we can download blocks there are many uh, hundreds of blocks online so let me for instance say download autocad blocks like so there are many websites available i'm gonna try the first one over here and boom we can see that this site has many blocks to download so what i'm gonna do is download maybe this uh, these things just to give you an example so i'm gonna download that where it says download cut, cut blocks and it's downloaded over here at the bottom i'm gonna open that folder and then here you have it uh, sinks so in the same way you can download uh, water closets and so on but once you download this i can simply extract all or i can simply uh, so i'm gonna say over here open that i can simply cut this file and then paste it wherever i need it so for that i'm gonna go on a folder really quick so for instance i'm gonna paste over here and where it says block library so i'm gonna erase all of these that i have and paste my uh, blocks that i just downloaded syncs so in the same way i can keep downloading blocks right let's say uh, i need these water closets or toilets so i'm gonna simply select and find the uh, option where it says download card blocks so it's right there i'm gonna show in folder and then again i'm gonna open that up and simply cut it and paste it on the folder that i can remember right so i'm gonna paste it over here and boom i already downloaded really quick some blocks so let's open those blocks to see how they look like so here we are, we have some nice blocks of lavatories or sinks. And over here on the other one, we have, um, oops. So we have sinks there and then we also have some water closets over here. So I'm gonna open it. All right, we can see we have some water closets in elevation as well as plan view. So that's a way to download blocks. Very straightforward, right? You can simply from here copy with Control C and go to your drawing that you need and simply paste it with Control V and so on. So let's go now with the next concept, which is um, the idea of managing and organizing blocks, right? Let's say you downloaded so many blocks, you created your own blocks. How do you manage them? How do you organize them in a way that you can reuse these blocks on other drawings that you utilize, right? So for that, let me show you uh, how I like to do that. So right now, um, we're going to need the block palette. So in order to do that, uh, 
let's type block palette which is right here blocks palette so once we do that we can see that we have some drawings right here some sorry some blocks right here so but look what happened now if i go over here in order to add a uh, new blocks i can simply click over here where it says uh sorry let's go to libraries and let's click over here to add more blocks so over here what you need to do is the blocks that you just downloaded uh, you simply gonna add those uh, files or drawings and simply click open i already did that for the toilets so that's why i'm having so many toilets or water closets over here and the same you do it with sinks and so on so the beauty of this is that now if you open a new drawing so let me go and open a brand new drawing right with a template from autocad so usually you wouldn't be able to use your drawings i mean your blocks but in this case i'm able to utilize my blocks so i can simply click and select and insert my blocks like so so that's the advantage of using the blocks palette in autocad again you can simply add your blocks by adding the drawing over here and you will be able to uh, utilize your blocks if i ever want to change it i can simply uh, add a new blocks by clicking here again uh, this time i'm gonna select sinks click open and then give some time and autocad is gonna add all of these things now isn't that a good way to manage your blocks in autocad well i believe so the beauty of this is that if you are in an office environment um you can simply put these path on a or these files on a server so anybody can utilize the same blocks all right so i believe we covered um most of the important concepts about blocks that i wanted to include in this autocad block tutorial as always this live stream came thanks to my supporters people who believe on my work thank you for that and thanks to those people you can watch this next video and save even more time in autocad so i'll see you over there in this next video